like, you know, you know, I'm mashallah, tabarak Allah, you know, I'm getting a degree and Allah knows he did not even finish high school, you know, all this, this is a lie she can't see. And for the sisters, they also, she says, mashallah, oh, I understand, mashallah, I, you know, I'm not like other girls who are emotional, will cry for everything, I, I can take it, I'm like a rock, mashallah. You know. She also, you know, have that attitude and she lies it left and right. And then the other group, as I said, someone who will give you someone who's packaged, abide by her from head to toe, and tomorrow when you lift the niqab, you say, subhanAllah, put the niqab back. <laughs> Both of them, Islamically, we don't encourage. What is Islam? Is, we need a middle path. We need hudud. And the beauty, the beauty of Sharia is, it caters to the need of young people. A lot of young people, they said, Brother Saeed, and they said it right here. I said, Brother Saeed, look, the brother's sitting, mashallah, in the, sitting on the east side of the building, and the sisters are sitting, mashallah, ma wara al qamar behind the moon or on the other side. How we, ever, how, we, how we would ever see them and how would they would ever see us? You know, this is not right. And they complain. And I agree. Young men and young women, they, they, we should come up a way that would cater to that need, allow them to meet, talk, see each other. And this way, when I say we need to come up, come up a way, it already exists. It's already the sunnah of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Someone, you know, you see a sister, mashallah, tabarakallah, sharia in Islam, if you're a sister, and you, you, mashallah, you think that's a good sister. You see her in school. You see her. Islamically, you are allowed to go to that sister. And what should you do? When she, what should you do when you go to the sister? Hey, baby, what's up? <laughs> you, know, you look so fine. You know, I saw you walking. I lost my mind. You know. No, you don't say that. You go to the sister and say, "Salam alaikum, sister." I'm interested in you, and you, you lower your gaze. You don't have to be X-ray, mashallah, from head to toe. You know, you lower your gaze, and you go, you go, you go to the sister and say, "Can I have your wedding's number?" And she will giggle and say, eh, 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 "You know." <laughs> and then she either will give it to you, or she will say, "My wedding is Allah Hamma, he died." And that means she doesn't want you. <laughs> Just go away and find someone else. There are channels, there are proper way of dealing with this. It's not open to everyone, to, you, to your own desire and whims. And, you know, and it is not a door that you cannot come through. You cannot see the sister until you say قبل to at the day of nikah. There are middle way and the sharia is calling. And that's why we call this conference the middle path. There's always middle path. The other thing, I will conclude, I think I'm running out of time. The other thing that is in Islam, that we is what we call al jawa shairi Romance in Islam. Mm. A lot of people, they think Islam has no romance. So we have two people in both groups. One group is a group, and I'm talking about after the nikah, not before. I'm talking about usra, nikah, romance in marriage, not before marriage. There's nothing called romance before marriage. We're talking about in marriage. Some of the Muslims, some of them, they go all, all overboard and they act like non-Muslim. And you see them, you know, kissing his wife in public places, you know, holding his wife in public places. You, don't, you may not see this in, in Africa, in East Africa. In Canada, mashallah, you see them everywhere like McDonald's. Everywhere you, you go, you see this sort of kind of Muslims. And they will say, Ya Akhi, you know, why are you so rigid? She's my wife. She's not my girlfriend. I can hold her hand. I can, you know. And we have the other side of Muslims. 
that if, he, if his wife touched his hand in public places, he would say, you're divorced, and your mother is divorced, and your ayaya is divorced, and your whole family is divorced. He will go to the extreme. Ahmed, I just held your hand. No, astaghfirullah. Jarima. And they consider, you know, this is min al ifa min al rujula that a man should not show any affection, should not smile. His wife should not say anything nice to him in public, should not say to him, you know, a kind word to him. They got to be formal. In Islam, it's different. In Islam, there must be that rahmah. وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ There have to be that. Eh? Your, your, your wife is not a plague. It's not a, you know, she's not a najis thing. She's not, you know, haram thing. And your husband is not that. But you also have, you can be and you should not be and you should never be like the kuffar. There's a middle path. There's a respect that should be accomplished between the husband and wife in public places. Even inside the house, we have those, everything is halal. Everything is halal. And we have those who say, you know, alif is halal, ba is haram. And that's it. In Islam, we have to be in the middle. Aisha radiyallahu anna, when she was asked about the messenger of Allah, how was the messenger of Allah in the house? She said, he is like any other man, but he was the most honorable of all men. She said, he's like any other man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, but he was the most honorable man. Which means, you know, he never neglected that intimacy with his wife. When he was, she was asked another hadith, what was the first thing that the Messenger of Allah used to do? He used to use miswak. Some of the ulama, they said, because the Messenger of Allah, he used to be intimately involved with his wife, and he did not want anything bad or any bad breath to come from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ah. Him and his wife, I have six minutes. Him and his wives, Aisha radiyallahu They used to bathe together. And if you're taking a shower, what do you do? You come with your jilbab, mashallah. And then he comes with his thawb and his imamah. And you take shower together? What do you do in shower? In shower, you leave everything out. And then you come like you were born. La bayk, Allahumma la bayk. Right? So if Nabi sallallahu alayhi was in the, with, with the highest respect, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa his wives are telling us that this is what they used to do, sallallahu radiyallahu anhu. But some people, even talking about this is ab. It's ab. I told you, I told you, maybe if I told you last year, I told you when I said in one of the classes, one of the halaqat, I said that Rasulullah sallallahu used to take his shower of Somali wa liba. And all lady, she said, And all lady, I said, the messenger of Allah used to take shower. And she said, Oh, this sheikh, he's done. There's no hope for this sheikh. This, this is different. You have to be on the middle path. You can't be rigid, but you can't be also lose and free and do whatever you want to do. You know, compare whatever we mention in everything in your life. The way we deal with our children, the way we deal with our spouses, the way we deal with our business partners, the way we deal with our neighbors. You will always have those two in who are missing their target and you have the middle path that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly Show the ummah. So in your life, you have to find balance. And this balance is not according to your own conclusion and my own conclusion. It is not according to what we think is right. It's not according to what society wants us to see as right and acceptable. It's according to the Quran and Sunnah. 
everything, the way you eat, the way you sleep, the way you use, go to the washroom, the way you shower, the way you, you know, walk, the way you run, the way you work, everything, there's a middle path. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this ummah, the ummah al-wasat, al-wasat. It's always in the middle. Never to any of the extremes. The way we deal with the non-Muslims, none of some of us, we go with this extreme. And they will say, you know, they are, you know, our brothers, you know, we should go to their church, we go to the synagogue, we should go to the temple, you know, we should pray with them, we should, we should do this, it's okay, as long as the iman is here, you just, just the action, it's fine, you know. And there are other group who were saying, you know, we, they, we don't want any of them, any, anything to do with them. We don't want to see them. We don't want to go to their church. We don't want to sit with them. We don't want to communicate. We don't want to do anything. We're done. But there's also a middle path. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did he receive the Christian delegation who came from Najran? How did he dealt with the other people who had other faith? There, are, there is a way that we learn from the our deen. So what I'm saying in conclusion is you need to be on that middle path and do not go any of the extremes. Wallahu a'la wa a'lam wa jazakum Allah khair wa salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.